في قلبي دوما يغمرني Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh um, Brother Gamal here The last time I spoke to you concerning Surah Yasin, We spoke about some of the warnings That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give to people Who do not pay, pay heed to his message In the next set of ayah We will now cover some of the warn uh, some of the benefits of people who pay heed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warning Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions innama tunziru man ittaba'a dhikra wa khashiya rahmana bil ghaib fabashshirhu bi maghfiratin wa ajrin kareem You can only warn him who follows the reminder the Quran and fears the most beneficent Allah who is the unseen give glad tidings to such people of forgiveness and a generous reward this verse explains that the warnings given by the Prophet وسلم, will be beneficial to those who believe in the Quran and follow its teachings and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even though they have not seen him these are such servants who will pay heed to the message of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and will benefit from the warnings he had given there are those who believe in allah hope for his mercy and fear his punishment they fear him both in public as well as in private seeing that these servants have benefited from the warning and the teachings of the Prophet وسلم, the Prophet was ordered by Allah to announce glad tidings to them of his forgiveness and his generous reward they have been informed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive their sins and grant them everlasting garden in paradise Surah Yasin continues in verse 12 and states Indeed, we give life to the dead and record that which they sent before them and their traces and all things we have recorded in a clear book. Here in this verse, Allah refutes the statement of the unbelievers who said that there will be no resurrection after death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear to the entire mankind that he will surely give to the dead life and shall resurrect them for the day of reckoning. Allah then informed informs mankind in the verse that he writes everything that they sent ahead of them and their traces their effects this part of the verse explains that there are two types of deeds of a man that are recorded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one is with respect to what he sends ahead for himself and the other is that which he leaves behind as for that which a man sends ahead for himself it refers to everything that a man does on the face of the earth good or bad for which he will be rewarded or punished in the hereafter dear these are all recorded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and none of man's deed will be left out if he does good he shall be rewarded with good and if he does bad he shall be requited with bad with respect to the deeds that are referred to in the verse as their traces or their effects that is those deeds that are referred to as what man has left behind and are recorded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Mufassirins and the great commentators of the Holy Quran has given various explanations. Some of the commentators have stated 
that it refers to the good and bad deeds that which were done by a person during his lifetime and were then followed and practiced upon by others after his death these deeds which were practiced upon by others shall be recorded in the favor of the deceased person if people practice upon the good deeds which he did or thought to others then he the deceased shall be rewarded for these and if the people practiced upon his bad deeds or the wrong things which he taught to them then he the deceased shall be punished for these in both cases the deeds done by others shall also come into the record of the deceased person since he was the one who had shown it to someone or may have taught it to another hence such deeds are known as his traces his effects are that which he left behind in this regard the Prophet Sallallahu has said to us, Whosoever started a good practice in Islam, for him shall be the reward of it and the reward of those who practice upon it after him without any decrease in their rewards. And whosoever started a bad practice in Islam, upon him shall be its sin and the sin of those who practice upon it after him without any decrease in their sins. It is also narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said to us, when the son of a man dies, all of his actions come to an end, except three, knowledge from which others benefit, a righteous child who supplicates for him, and continuous charity after him. A similar narration has been mentioned in the Sunan of Ibn Majah in which it is stated that the following deed continues to bring rewards for a person even after his death. There are knowledge which he acquired and disseminated, pious children which he left behind, a copy of the Quran which he left behind, building a place of rest for travelers, digging a well and making water available for people and spending in charity while one was in health or in sickness. While explaining the verse, the great commentator of Quran, Imam Qurtubi writes, the traces or the effects of a man are those deeds or actions which remain and are remembered after his death. Whether they are good or bad, a man shall be rewarded for the traces or the effects of good. It can be the knowledge which he taught, a book which he wrote, a building which he built like a masjid or a bridge. In a like manner, a person will be punished for the evils and the wrongs he introduced and practiced which remained among the people. The great scholar and commentator of the Holy Quran, Alama Muhammad Fana'ullah, may Allah have mercy on his soul, has also given a similar explanation which has been adopted by the leading commentators of the Quran. He writes, The traces or the effects of a man mentioned in the verse includes such good deeds like knowledge which he disseminated endowments waqf which he gave a forgotten sunnah of the prophet sallallahu which he revived and a good path which he showed to others it also includes such bad deeds like introducing a custom based on falsehood establishing injustices helping kufr and initiating innovations. The gist of the above mentioned explanation of verse 12 of Surah Yasin, which mentions their traces or their effects, is that the deeds referred to are such good or bad deeds of a man which continue to be practiced upon and followed by people after his demise. Besides the fact 
that these actions will be written in the records of those who do these deeds, they will also be written in the record of the deceased person. Another explanation given by other commentators is that traces or effects refer to the traces and the effects of the footsteps taken towards the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his disobedience. Hence, it refers to the traces of the footsteps taken while walking to the masjid and other places of goodness. All of these footsteps and their traces are written in the record of a person. In this regard, it is narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said, One good deed is written and one bad deed is removed for every step taken by a person who is going to and returning from the masjid. It is narrated by Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu an that there was an empty piece of land close to the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Banu Salma, an Ansari tribe who lived at a distance away from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam intended to leave where they were living and come closer to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When this information reached the Prophet, he called them and said, it has reached me that you intend to relocate to the masjid. They said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah, this is what we intended. Upon this, the Prophet ﷺ said, O, ba o Banu Salma, remain at your houses, for the traces of your footsteps are recorded. Remain at your houses, for the traces of your footsteps are recorded. It is also narrated from Thabit al Bunani, uh, may Allah have mercy on his soul, that he said, I once walked with Anas radiallahu an for salah, and I walked very fast. Anas radiallahu an, and who held my hand, and we walked for a short while. When we had completed salah, uh, Anas radiallahu an, who said, once I walked hurriedly with Zaid ibn Thabit radiallahu an, and he said, O oh Anas, do you know that the traces of those footsteps are recorded? Do you know that the traces of the footsteps are recorded? Both explanations given above by the great commentators of the Holy Quran are sound and authentic and are all accepted by all scholars to be proper explanations of the verse. The fact that the footsteps taken while walking to the masjid are recorded are well established from many authentic traditions. These are not from the good deeds of a man and are from the actions which should be followed by others. In this way, all other actions are treated. Thus, while the second interpretation speaks of the recording of the footsteps taken while going to the masjid, the first interpretation generalizes all good deeds, including the steps taken to the masjid and also all bad deeds done by a person. When these were left behind after a person's death as practices and traits, that were practiced and followed by others. The great Mufassir, Hafiz ibn Kathir, has explained this in his famous commentary and said, There is no contradiction nor, inconsist uh, nor inconsistency between both statements. Instead, from the second explanation, a clear warning and indication is given to the first explanation. For certainly, when the physical traces of the footsteps are recorded, then to a greater extent, the good and bad deeds of a man which he left behind as practices and traits to be followed would be recorded. And Allah knows best. Now, Surah Yasin continues in verses 13 and 14 
and states وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا أَصْحَابَ الْقَرْيَةِ إِذْ جَاءَهَا الْمُرْسَلُونَ and put forward to them a similitude the story of the dwellers of the town when they came messengers to them إِذْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ إِذْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهِمُ اثْنَيْنِ فَكَذَّبُوهُمَا فَعَذَّذْنَا بِثَالِثٍ فَقَالُوا إِنَّا إِلَيْكُمْ مُرْسَلُونَ When we sent them to messengers, they belied them both. So we enforced them with a third. And they said, Verily, we have been sent to you as messengers. Here the Prophet ﷺ asked to rehearse to his people who disbelieved in him the incident of the town, since in this narration there were lessons to be learned and warnings to be taken. Allah sent messengers to this town to invite its people to the message of truth and to warn them of his punishment if they did not, if they did not believe in him. Verse 14 went on to state that the two messengers were sent to the people of the town, but when they were denied, Allah sent a third as a support and strength to the previous two. While commenting on these verses, the great Mufassirun and commentators of the Quran have stated that this was the tongue of an taqiyya or any arch. According to the opinions of all the Mufassirin, in this town there was a Pharaoh or a Pharaoh who worshipped idols. Allah sent three messengers to these people whose names were Sadiq, Saduk, and Shalom. Allah ordered the prophets to warn the polytheists at this time by rehearsing his narration to them lest the same punishment comes to them as it came to the dwellers of the town this is the commentary given by abdullah ibn abbas and Ka'b al ahbar um, uh, these companions of the prophet some commentators have stated that these three messengers were not prophets as deputed by Allah, but there were disciples of Isa alayhi salam, who was sent by him to convey the message of his religion to the tongue, to the people of the town. This explanation has been given by Qatada as narrated by Ibn Jarir. Imam Qurtubi has also indicated to this opinion and said, it has been stated that it was Isa alayhi salam who sent these messengers to this town to call towards Allah. This occurred at a time when Isa alayhi salatu was salam was taken up to the heavens. The majority of the commentators, however, have stated that the three messengers were prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verses 14 mentions that which the messenger came to them they said verily we have been sent to you as messengers in response to this the unbelieving people of the tongue said the people of the tongue said you are only human beings like ourselves and the most merciful Allah has re revealed nothing you are only telling lies the people while denying them as messengers told them that they were humans just as they were they did not have anything that made them special or worthy of being above them in addition, they told the messengers that Allah has not revealed anything to them that made them messengers, nor did He convey a message to them. In fact, they believe that they were lying with respect to the claim of being messengers. Upon this statement made by the unbelievers, the messenger replied, 
qalu rabbuna ya'lamu inna ilaykum lamursalun the messenger said our lord knows that we have been sent as messengers to you wa ma alayna illa al-balagh al-mubin and our duty is only to convey plainly the message the messenger made it clear to them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows very well that they are his messengers and that he has sent them to the town. Allah's knowledge of them that they were upon the truth and that they were not liars is sufficient. In addition, the messengers told them that their task was simply to convey a plain message to them. They were not responsible for anything else besides that. Hence, when they accepted them as messengers or not, their job was only to deliver a message, which they will do. Benefits and harms are, were connected to their acceptance and non-acceptance of the message. Furthermore, rejection of their message cannot cause harm to them. When the messenger spoke in this manner, the people of the tongue retorted, and they said, Kalu inna tatayyarnakum la in lan tantahu lanarjumannakum wa la yamassannakum minna azabun alim. The people said, For us, we see an evil omen from you. If you cease not, we will surely stone you, and a painful torment will touch you from us. They said to the messenger, we see an evil om uh, omen from you. It means that they said, we do not see any good in your faces when you are living amongst us. Katada said, they were saying, if bad touches us, then it is because of you. Mujahid, may Allah have mercy upon his soul, said, they were saying, people like you have never entered into a city except that the dwellers were punished. They considered the presence of the messenger to be a cause for their troubles and difficulties. Muqatil said that rainfall was withheld from them for a period of three years and they said that this was an account of the presence of the messengers. As mentioned by the commentators, the reason that the people of the town considered the messengers, messengers to be a bad omen was that the messengers invited them to a religion which they were not practicing. They saw it as being strange and considered to be bad. Hence, they disliked what they were called towards and saw it as an evil omen. This, however, has been the way and the conduct of the ignorant and arrogant people. They love that which their hearts are inclined towards, and they hate and detest that which their hearts are adverse to. Thus, they will totally oppose to the teachings of the messengers, and for this reason, they saw the messengers as an evil omen. Having accused the prophet as being a sign of an evil omen, they threatened them and said, if you cease not, we will surely stone you and a painful punishment will touch you from us. They issue a threat to the messengers that if they do not stop their speeches and their mission of propagating their religion, they will stone them to death and will make them suffer a painful torment. In response to their threat and false statement, the messenger replied, The messenger said, Your evil omen will be with you because you are admonished. Nay, but you are a people that has transgressed all bounds by committing all kinds of great sins. Here the messenger told them clearly that their evil omens were with them. It means that they were the cause of their evil and bad state. Their disbelief 
sins and bad actions were causes for their troubles and difficulties. Their statements that the messenger were the evil omen were due to their intense love they had for kufr, shirk, and sins. It was on account of these they opposed the messenger and developed a hatred for their message. Hence, their share of good and bad were with them, and the decree which has been made for them will come about. The prophets also rebuked them and said, Because you are admonished, it means are you saying that we are a bad omen only because you are admonished? Or have you threatened to stone us because you are admonished? The prophet went on to tell them that if this be the case, then they are open transgressors. It means that they have crossed all limits by disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and committing sins. Inshallah, as we continue the other part, next part I'll discuss ayah 20 uh, with a continuation of what I did before. Um, thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.